Now, the geopolitical tension in Iraq seems to have contributed to gold's recent rise. Gold is uh, some way off from the record high of around $1,900 an ounce, which it hit in 2011 in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. But it has been enjoying a decent run lately. Gold future prices topped $1,327 an ounce on Tuesday. And that's the highest level since March and also the second straight quarter of gains. So what is driving Gold's recent rally for his perspective? I'm joined by Paul Sachs, who's the Principal and Chief Information Officer for Orem Option Strategies. Paul, good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me here. So Gold is making a bit of a comeback, Paul, up 6.7% over the past month. What's driving this? Uh, well, certainly it's not just one thing. There is a, a bunch of different safe haven demand bids that you mentioned. Um, there is some sense that there's a possibility there's a, uh, inflation around the corner. There's been some domestic economic data points that have been a little bit warmer than what was expected, in particular the CPI. The, so, and um, in there, particularly strong was energy and food. And as far as I can tell, people like food and we need our energy. So Absolutely. I think going forward, there's going to be more strength there. But what about the recent geopolitical tensions that we've seen, the situation in Iraq, in the Middle East, in the Ukraine? Has that been playing up to gold's demand? Well, a lot of people are mentioning it. I'll give you my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge proponent of this idea of the safe haven bid playing a very large role in the gold rally. Um, it, we've sold off from 1390 all the way down to 1240, just as the uh, Ukraine situation got worse and worse. In the past few years, think about what we've had. We've had the Syrian crisis, um, Cyprus, you know, literally confiscation of fiat currency. I mean, what else can a gold that, bug ask for? That was pretty bad. And here we are, $600 currency. off the highs. So right? you don't think geopolitical tensions play a part in this? Then? I think they play a very minor role. I think it's a backdrop. I think the things that are more important are who's buying gold, right? Typically, in recent years, there's been a massive migration of gold going from east to west. So we're talking India, of course, we're talking China. Right. They're price sensitive, okay? So they buy more when gold dips, but they typically are willing to back away when it rallies, and you're seeing that now, much less physical demand in the gold market. Before I focus on China, I want to touch back a little bit on uh, the role of inflation in the U.S. and, and the Fed, because uh, the Fed has consistently kept interest rates low, Inflation hawks are against this move, saying that any minute now it's going to rear its ugly head and will be too late. Is that helping the rally? It certainly is. I mean, a lot of people are, are bullish on gold and have a small allocation to gold based on this idea that all of the expansive monetary policies of the recent years will ultimately lead to inflation, and typically gold does well during inflation. But, you know, they've been waiting and it just hasn't come yet. Right. Um, let's focus on China. And what we saw is, as you mentioned, China is the world's biggest producer and consumer of gold. And the rising sentiment then is, why is China then dependent on benchmark in London and in the US? And there has been a call for China to establish its own benchmark. How likely is that to happen? I think it's extraordinarily likely. I mean, these commodities exchanges in China put up tremendous, tremendous amount of volume. And that's before they've even listed options, which they are going to this year. I think in the end, the Chinese want a, an RMB to be on par with the US dollar, with the euro, not necessarily the world reserve currency, but among the top three. In order to accomplish that, they're going to have to accumulate, in all likelihood, some massive gold reserves. Well, well China is making moves to launch three physical gold exchange contracts um, in the Shanghai pilot free trade zone. You see that happening on what time frame? I think it's happening all this year. I think they're very deliberate. They're moving very carefully. They're going to roll out one instrument at a time. They're going to be very safe, very careful. But I think in the next six to 12 months, there's going to be a host of new contracts, both on the future side and on the option side. Now, Singapore is also vying for the position of the Asian gold hub. Who do you think has the better chance here? I, I, I think. I think Shanghai does. I mean, I think they have the volume. I mean, they have the consumer base. I mean, I think there's basically 600 million people there that are waiting for day one, the market to open, where they're going to buy it. I mean, I think ultimately there's just going to be one gold price. It's going to be very efficiently arbitraged around the globe. I have many colleagues already that, that trade. We're going to move yeah. to just one gold price? Would I that be a gold spot or a gold future contract? Yeah, in all likelihood it will be, well, that's the contention, right? Will it be priced in U.S. dollars or in RMB? But right. for all intents and purposes, 
purposes, an ounce of gold is an ounce of gold, or there they prefer kilos, actually, whereas here we have... I'm a metric girl. I prefer oh, kilos well done. as well. <laughs> well. Well done. Well done. So in the end, gold will just be gold, and it'll just be a synthetic way to trade the, cur the relative currency values. What's the time frame for that, do you think? I mean, it's all happening right now. It, it takes time. These governments don't move quickly. Um, and there's a high degree of regulation that's permeating all around the world, but it's happening right now. Paul, very quickly, what's your outlook for gold over the next three months? Okay, so my second half outlook for gold isn't looking too rosy. I mean, I think the economic data points domestically are going to start to improve. Interest rates are going to inch higher. Both of those things point for a lower gold price. I would say by the second half, end of this year, we're looking at a price between 1200 and 1250 oh. All right, so a good time to get out of the gold market. All right, thank you so much for your insight. Great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Paul Sachs, Principal and Chief Information Officer at RM Option Strategies.